In this video, we're gonna cover basic setup of GameCube and Wii emulation within the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. So the Xbox Series X and S are quite decent at doing GameCube and Wii emulation, including some of the more demanding titles like Rogue Squadron 2 with some trade-offs. That being said, the RetroArch version of Dolphin is not the greatest way to experience it. Sir Mangler has made a standalone version of the Dolphin emulator, which uses the more up-to-date builds, has better features, better support, and just overall a better experience. Because I don't think RetroArch Dolphin is that great, I'm really not going to waste my time going over everything I have covered in it in the past when it was the only option on Xbox. For those more advanced features, you really will want to use standalone because they actually work. Mostly. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, this guide is a continuation of my RetroArch and Dev Mode install guide. So if you don't have RetroArch installed or Dev Mode set up, this is the guide for you. Link in the description below, along with the rest of my emulation on Xbox Series X and S playlist. So you're going to want to make sure you get Dev Mode installed, get RetroArch set up, and a properly formatted USB drive. So this is included in my RetroArch and Dev Mode install guide, but if you want a separate video on it, I have that as well for Mac and Windows. So this playlist also has a whole selection of standalone Dolphin emulator setup guides for things like getting it installed, controller customization, online play, HD texture packs. So link to this playlist will again be in the description. So the first thing to getting GameCube and Wii emulation up and running on our Xbox Series X and S after getting RetroArch installed is to acquire GameCube and Wii games. So GameCube, Wii, WiiWare, and Virtual Console games are all supported. If you happen to have a large physical collection of Wii and GameCube games, you can use a modded Wii to dump those so you can use them in your emulation projects. And I do have a video on the channel on how to do so using clean rips. So link to this will be in the description below. I don't currently have a virtual console or WiiWare dumping guide, but I hope to have one soon. Alternatively, you could always resort to the Googles to find stuff, but as always, piracy is not condoned on this channel. So don't ask for illegal download links as they will not be provided. Now let's talk about supported formats. So your WiiWare and Virtual Console games are gonna be in WAD format, W-A-D, and you're gonna leave them as such. For Wii games, you're gonna have ISO, or you can compress them into GCZ using a PC version of Dolphin. Avoid WBFS for Wii games, it just seems to not work at all for most people. So I have mine in ISO and CISO, and they work fine. Now, as for GameCube games, these ones can be in ISO, GCM, GCZ. Mine are just in GCZ format for today's demonstration. Now, there is one extra bit of setup we need to do for RetroArch Dolphin when it comes to multi-disc games, and that is to add in an M3U file to tell RetroArch that it has two discs so we can make disc swaps easier. So to do this, just go into one of your multi-disc game folders and create a text file and you can name it whatever you want. Once that text file is created, just go ahead and open it up. And now you need to add in the entire game name plus its file extension for both disks into the text document. So if you can't see file extensions, just click on the view button, show, and make sure file name extensions is checked. But anyway, you just gotta grab the entire file name and paste it into your text document one per line. And once that's finished, just go ahead and click on save and close out of the text document. Now we need to change the extension from .txt to .m3u. And you'll get a message about it being mad about file type changes. Just go ahead and click on yes. And there we go. Multi-disc setup is now complete. And you will need to repeat this process with every multi-disc game that you plan on using. But once you have that ready to go, just go ahead and pop your Xbox USB drive into your computer and open it up and add your games into the appropriate folder within the games folder. My games folder set up a little bit differently than the pre-folder structure that comes with the Xbox formatter these days. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy them in. So just bear with it while it does its thing. And once those games are finished copying over, you can go ahead and take that USB drive out of your computer and pop it into your Xbox and get booted up into RetroArch. Once booted into RetroArch, we need to get our Dolphin emulator set up. So head down to the online updater, go down to Core System Files Downloader, find the dolphin.zip, and then just press then just press A on it to get it downloaded. 
With that downloaded, we are now free to begin loading up our Dolphin content. So GameCube, Wii, WiiWare, Virtual Console stuff, doesn't matter. So one method of doing so is to go to load content, navigate to your E drive, find your games folder, and then just select the game and tell it to run. But if you don't want to deal with that convoluted method, you can head over to import content, and we're going to do a manual scan. Scan directory will not work on GameCube and Wii. Now just choose your content directory. So we're going to start with uh, GameCube here. And we're going to tell it to scan this directory. Now under system name, just press right on your controller to go down to Nintendo and find GameCube. Default core, press right to go down to Nintendo and find Dolphin. Now, if you have multi-disc games, we're gonna go ahead and turn scan recursively off because we're gonna do another scan momentarily. Now, just go ahead and start the scan. Now, for our multi-disc games, we're gonna turn scan recursively on, and we're gonna type in an extension for M3U, so that way it only catches our M3U file games. So once you have that set, go ahead and tell it to start the scan again. And now when you come out, you'll have a new GameCube playlist here on the left, with all of your games inside, and you'll find your M3U file multi-disc games listed as well, just as a single entry. Now we're gonna do the same thing with Wii games. So going back into manual scan, content directory, we're gonna choose Nintendo Wii for my example here. System name, we're gonna go down to Nintendo Wii. Default core, Dolphin, yes. Now I just need to get rid of this file extension. It's not gonna do us any good here. So just type a space, press start to get rid of it. And then make sure scan recursively is on if you have things separated into subfolders and then tell it to start the scan. And once completed, you now have a Nintendo Wii playlist entry here on the left. And then do the same thing again, this time for your WiiWare or virtual console games, depending on how you have your directory set up. So I have mine as Virtual Console. System name, we're gonna go to Nintendo Wii Digital. Same thing, Nintendo GameCube slash Wii Dolphin is our default core. Make sure Scan Recursively is on if you have things separated into arc or subfolders. And then just tell it to start the scan. And now we have a Wii Digital's playlist entry which has all of my Virtual Console games inside of it. But to play a game, all you need to do is go into your preferred playlist, select the game, and tell it to run. And there we have it, GameCube games up and running on the Xbox Series X using RetroArch. Now, running things on the Wii can be a bit of a different story, just depending on which type of game you're running. If the game supports GameCube controller input or uh, classic controller support, it's pretty straightforward. But for anything that needs either just a standalone Wiimote or a Wiimote plus nunchuck, you will need to go into your quick menu as the game is loading and get things set up as needed. So, for example, if we go into our quick menu while a Wii game is running and go into the controls tab, port one controls, you can see the device type needed for every single game. So here we go, we've got Wiimote, Wiimote Sideways, Wiimote Plus Nunchuck, Classic Controller, Classic Controller Pro, GameCube Controller. So just select the one that you need on a per game basis, and then you can map keys as you see fit. And then once you have the control set up, make sure you go up to Manage Remap Files and save them as a game remap file so that way you don't have to come back in and change the controller every time you load up a different game. It's just kind of a hassle. But here is an example of a Wii game up and running within RetroArch here, so... And then finally, let's give a virtual console example here, so Mega Man X2. Again, we gotta go into the controller option to connect the right type of a controller here. So we need a classic controller plugged in for this one. And then we'll save it as a game remap file so that way we never have to select it again for this title. And there you go, Mega Man X2 Virtual Console version up and running within RetroArch. Virtual Console emulation is a bit more demanding than typical uh, Wii stuff just because it's emulating an emulator. So don't be surprised if 
some virtual console stuff kind of runs like crap. But now let's go ahead and talk about how to change discs in a multi-disc game. So I loaded up Resident Evil 4 Disc 2, and it needs Game Disc 1. So to do this, go ahead and open up your RetroArch Quick Menu. Scroll down to Disc Control, and you'll see an Eject Disc option. Just press A on this. Now you'll see Current Disc Index, and you just need to change this to the disc that is needed. So for my example, we need Resident Evil 4 Disc 1, so I'm just going to change this over to 1, and tell it to insert the disc. And if for whatever reason it doesn't work, chances are you need to make it so it'll read, the emulator will keep running in the background. So to do this, just back out, go up to settings, go to user interface, and turn off pause content when menu is active. That way the game will continue running in the background. Then you can go back into the quick menu, disc control, you can eject the disc and then insert it again. And there we go, so it's a brand new save, so we're just going to make a save file here. But there we go, Resident Evil 4 Disc 1 has now been loaded up. And that is how you change discs in multi-disc titles. But now let's go ahead and talk about some of the core options available to us within Dolphin 4 RetroArch. So heading into the core options menu, our first option is renderer, leave this on hardware. Next we have our internal resolution selection, so you can up-res your games. So for most GameCube stuff, you shouldn't have much issue running them at three to four times resolution. Just be aware if it starts to lag, just lower it back down until there isn't lag anymore. Next up, you can choose whether or not your emulated Wii is running in widescreen mode. There's the widescreen hack, which will attempt to run your games in 16 by nine. Most of the time it results in uh, some less than ideal stuff. Shader compilation mode, we unfortunately have to leave this on synchronous because the RetroArch version of Dolphin does not support Uber shaders. You can turn on wait for shaders before starting to make it so the shader compilation stutter is less noticeable, but RetroArch doesn't really tell you how it is doing shader compilation, so you might just be left on a black screen for a long time. It is better to have this on, but for RetroArch, I typically leave it off. Next, you can enable or disable progressive scan mode or PAL 60. Next, anti-aliasing. You can crank this up to eight times SSAA if desired. Anisotropic filtering. Crank this up to 16x if you want. Leave skip presenting duplicate frames on for a bit of a performance boost. Leave immediate XMB off. Scaled EFB copy. Leave this one on. Forced texture filtering is pretty much going to give you the same results as anisotropic filtering, so you can pretty much ignore it. We're going to go ahead and skip over the next two options. So now we have GPU texture decoding. This can give better results on certain titles. So if you have a game that is giving you some performance issues, you could try turning it on and see if it helps out. Otherwise, just leave it off. Leave fast depth calculation on. And then finally, bounding box emulation. Some games do need this. I believe Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is one of them. Disable EFB to VRAM, leave this off. I'm not covering custom textures in this video. If you wanna use custom textures, use standalone Dolphin. CPU core, leave this on JIT64. Now CPU clock rate, this is to overclock or underclock your emulated GameCube CPU. So if you have games that can't run full speed, just lower this down until you have no audio stuttering. It comes at the trade-off of lower frames per second. Emulation speed, this will basically let you run the emulator as fast as the Xbox can handle it. Not really needed. Fast mem, leave this one on. You can speed up the disk transfer rate, not really needed. Next up, Wiimote IR mode, so you will need this to control your on-screen Wiimote pointer. There's relative and absolute personal preference on which one you like. And then you can control the offset of the IR receiver and where the pointer is actually on your screen. Next, you can turn rumble on and off, set the sensor bar position. We don't need to worry about Wiimote continuous scanning. Use ports 5 through 8 for GameCube controllers in Wii mode. Never really saw a point to this one. Your uses might be vastly different than mine. Audio mixer rate, so if you want to have better audio quality, you can turn this up to 48,000. Leave DSP HLE on, JIT on. Next, you can select a language. And then the next option is to use Dolphin's internal cheats. I'm not going over cheats setup for this video. Again, Retroarc Dolphin's just not worth it to me. Now the next option, OSD enabled. So this is for those yellow messages that appear at the top of the screen when you're writing to and from memory card or loading up different things. You could turn those off if desired. But that's all of our core options. So as always, if there's things you wanna have saved for some games but not others, you can come up to manage core options and save them as a game options file. That way they only load up for that game instead of the entire emulator as a whole.
Now the last thing I want to cover in this video is the use of shaders. RetroArch's built-in shader library is awesome for GameCube, and one thing I miss greatly while using standalone Dolphin. But you can just come in, CRT, shaders, easy mode, gives you a fantastic look on upscaled and up content. But shaders are all personal preference, so go through, load them up, find ones that you enjoy, and just run with them. But once you find a shader you like, you just go back into the shader tab, click on save, and you can save them as a core preset, so that way every time you load up a game within Dolphin, that is the shader that will greet you. You can also save them as a game preset, so you can have different shaders for things like virtual console games if desired. But that's gonna do it as far as GameCube and Wii emulation within the RetroArch version of Dolphin is concerned. Again, I didn't cover HD texture packs and cheats in this video because you're just so much better off using the standalone build of Dolphin, especially with those features. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your GameCube and Wii emulation projects up and running to your desires. But again, I would strongly urge you to check out Sir Mangler's standalone Dolphin port over using RetroArch any day of the week. But that being said, here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going for so long. Your support really does mean the world. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.